What is up everyone and welcome back to another episode of History Behind the Horror. I'm your host Tay and for today's video we will be talking about a game that we haven't touched on in a very long time which is the Evil Within series. And for today's character we will be talking about Anima from the Evil Within 2. Make sure you guys remember to like and share this video if you would like to see more Evil Within on this channel. I use that to determine whether or not I should continue a series or I should actually do more of that series. So if you guys can do that for me I would really appreciate it and as always thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Anima is a mysterious creature haunting the streets and many residents of Union. While she seems to target Sebastian specifically, multiple logs and diary entries found throughout the town suggest that she picks other targets randomly, following and tormenting them for some time until they finally cave in from paranoia or until she decides to just kill them herself. Anima is only visible to her victims. Visually, Anima resembles a disheveled woman clad in tattered robes. Her face is shrouded by her long hair and is briefly visible when attacking the player. Although she walks with a slow shuffling gait, she is capable of an alarming rush of speed when pursuing a victim. The presence of Anima can be determined by the environment becoming colder and shrouded with fog that only vanishes once the player has escaped her proximity. A visual distortion effect can be observed when she is within proximity of the player, which gets more garbled as she draws closer, letting them know when to stay put or find a way out. She constantly seems an eerie version of Claire de Lune, which can be used to determine her distance from the player. Anima is capable of phasing through walls and doors, as well as levitation and telekinesis which she uses to hunt her victims. She is completely immune to damage and will instantly kill the player by draining their life force if she catches them. This presumably turns them into the lost as well, as demonstrated when the local preacher is transformed after going through a very similar process. Okay. Anima is first encountered in Chapter 3, although she appears to have been present in Union before Sebastian's arrival. 
Several corpses can be found around the district with journal entries that describe being pursued by an unknown force, including a soldier who barricaded himself inside an otherwise impenetrable garage. The first direct encounter with Anima occurs at 336 Cedar Avenue where she appears behind Sebastian as he attempts to leave the house. Forced into a nightmarish vision of the hospital, he manages to elude the creature and escapes back to Union. An optional encounter also occurs during the chapter in a small storage shed opposite the North safe house. A hallucination is triggered upon entering the shed where Anima violently pounds against the door for a few seconds, after which the hallucination ends and Sebastian finds himself transported outside the door, now locked. Another optional encounter occurs inside the shack with the workbench just north of Crimson Market. The hallucination triggers when attempting to leave the shack. Anima's second encounter occurs in Chapter 7 in the Juke Diner. After witnessing the last memories of a man committing suicide to escape the creature stalking him, Sebastian is attacked when examining a nearby jukebox and forced into another hallucination. Despite Anima's attempts to disorientate him using the environment, he manages to escape her once more. thing want from me. Anima makes a final appearance in Chapter 11 in the restricted labs of the Marrow, ambushing Sebastian as he attempts to escape the underground facility and violently throws him into a final hallucination. Seemingly frustrated with Sebastian's continued survival, she begins to attack him more violently, blocking his path with debris and using her telekinesis to expose him from behind cover. Sebastian manages to evade her one final time and she is not seen for the rest of the game.
In addition to the scripted encounters, Anima can manifest randomly as Sebastian explores Union. A bright light will protrude her arrival and nearby enemies will vanish from the area, which will then take a blue hue and become surrounded in a thin layer of mist. The glitch-like effect will start to affect the player's vision of Sebastian and their surroundings, with Anima singing giving the player another sense of her proximity to them. To escape Anima, the players must move out of her proximity until the environment returns to normal, which will cause her to vanish. She can manifest any anywhere except safe houses.
Anima is the physical manifestation of Sebastian's guilt, fear, and trauma he suffers as a result of the horrors he endured during his first time in STEM at Beacon. She is the guardian of his guilt and fear and doesn't cease to exist while he still has these feelings inside of him. This is further proven when Sebastian shoots the version of himself that was trapped within STEM, symbolizing him letting go of these things, which results in her disappearing forever. And that concludes yet another episode of History Behind the Horror. If you enjoyed yourself here tonight, make sure to please give the video a like and share it. And make sure you subscribe because we got more things coming up very soon that I'm sure you wouldn't want to miss. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you on the next episode of History Behind the Horror.